today's video, we're getting started on executing the plan I outlined in the first video. The first task is to implement a completely concrete example of a Win32 OpenGL setup layer. So I want a window that I can see. I want to have some kind of OpenGL call that actually renders to that window. And I want to know that I'm initializing like a 3.3 or later context. And the reason I specify that is that there's a sort of transition phase on the Windows operating system in particular, where if you go with very old style context, it's not so hard to get them set up. But when you want a modern context, there's a lot more rigmarole. Now for me personally, I've done this several times. I know the details of how to get this thing up and running. So it's not gonna be a whole lot of learning from scratch, but I'm still gonna have to spend a lot of time looking at the documentation because there's a lot of details and cruft that goes into setting the system up on Windows in particular. I'm gonna walk through those details because I think if you had to figure out how to do this from scratch without any help, it'd be almost impossible. At the very least, it would take a long time and a lot of dedication to figure out everything you need to know. And once you know the basic outline of what needs to happen, going and using the docs to fill in the details helps get you there a lot quicker. I also wanted to take a quick moment to comment on the style of the code. So since this is example code and it's extremely flat, I'm not putting any thought into how I'm going to make it reusable. So for instance, when an error comes up right now, I'm just printing the error and exiting as soon as possible. I have an if after everything that could cause an error, I print out a very specialized error message for just that context, and then I quit the process entirely. I shut everything down. In real reusable code for this kind of layer, I would probably not want to shut down right away. I would want the caller to figure out what to do next if they want to print a message or put it in a log or put it in a window message box or anything else. And if they want to shut the process down or if they want to keep it going, that should be in their hands if it's reusable code. But that's a lot more complicated. Right now, I want quick iteration. I want to focus on the problem of just getting from I don't have an OpenGL context to I have one by spending as little amount of my programming time as possible. I can use a later pass to clean this up and turn it into a reusable code once I know that I've gotten the part I want to do today done, the concrete part, right? So that's what we'll be focusing on is an error handling style and other coding styles that are less cleaned up and more brute force get through it as fast as possible, make the iteration speed as quick as possible. The first step is called the bootstrapping step in my outline. What we're doing in bootstrapping is trying to load the wiggle functions that we need to actually create a modern OpenGL context. So why do we have to do that? It's a fairly long story and I'm gonna give you a quick summary of it right now. It all starts with the fact that in order to get an, a graphical window working in the modern architecture, several different parties have to implement code that cooperate. First of all, the operating system wants to create the window, give it interactive properties, and composite multiple windows together to make the monitor image that you actually see on your screen. And then the graphics card creators want to implement the software that drives their graphics card. And so what has to happen is that the operating system provides some of the structure that the driver implementers will plug into. And then those driver implementers are actually implementing a graphics API, which is defined by probably a third party. So for instance, in the case of OpenGL, the Kronos group has defined OpenGL, the API. And then my graphics card manufacturer has implemented that API. But then how does that get to me? Well, that gets me through Windows, who has to provide an interface for loading that API into my process. But Microsoft decided they didn't really want to be friendly with OpenGL after a little while because they were making their own graphics APIs. So after a first, the first few versions of OpenGL, they stopped implementing features into their operating system that would actually allow a driver implementer to load in a modern OpenGL context. There are just parameters that you need to specify to create modern OpenGL contexts that aren't available in the old APIs that Microsoft provided. They didn't get rid of those old APIs. You can still use those, but you can't use those APIs to create a modern context. So someone had to go and standardize an extension to the Windows APIs that the driver implementers can implement, and then a standard way to load that extension using the stuff that already was there. 
So long story short, there's some old stuff that is already built into the operating system that we can use to get to an old style OpenGL context. We can use an old style OpenGL context to load the modern Wiggle functions. Remember, Wiggle is the Windows specific API for loading OpenGL. Once we have the modern Wiggle functions, we can close down that first context and that's the end of the bootstrapping phase. So that's the story of why we have to do a bootstrapping phase. Now, here's the actual outline of what goes into this bootstrapping phase. First, we have to register a class on Windows. Before you make, win before you make any Windows, you have to register a window class that basically describes some parameters for the window that want to be shared amongst multiple windows. Even if you're only making one window, you still need a window class. Then you can actually create the window. So remember, this is not a real window, but we need a window before we can create an OpenGL context. So we're never going to show the user this window, but we still have to create one. So I call this the bootstrapping window. It's the window we create just so that we can create a bootstrapping context. Then we go on to create an OpenGL bootstrap context. Now creating an OpenGL context on Windows is also a little bit of work. We have to fit, find a pixel format that is compatible with the window and set that first. And once the window has a good pixel, pixel format set, it is then possible to go and actually create the OpenGL context that attaches to that window. So once we've got a new OpenGL context attached to that window, that's using the old style OpenGL context that Windows natively supports, we then can go and load Wiggle extension functions, that becoming the fourth part of the bootstrapping process. And then finally, once we have those modern Wiggle functions, we clean up the bootstrap class, window, and context. The second phase is creating a graphics window. A lot of the details in creating a graphics window look the same from a high level outline, but all the internal details are a little bit different. So I just implement a totally separate code path. I don't try to deduplicate any of this because there's just not a lot of similarities between any of the things I'm actually gonna do, even though they have a similar pattern. So the first thing I do is I create a new window class again. This one's a little bit different. It's going to actually point to some things that I want my real graphics windows to know about that I don't really care about in the bootstrapping window case, and it would actually be kind of confusing if they did point to it. Then I create an actual window. It's only an actual window in the sense that I'm going to show it to the user eventually if everything succeeds, where I was never going to show the bootstrapping window. There's actually no big difference between the two except for the parameters I used for positioning and titling the window in the graphics window case are for real instead of just dummies. Then I go to create the actual graphics OpenGL context. In order to do this, I have to use some of those wiggle extension functions. So I still have to pick a, a pixel format for my window, but now I have access to uh, an extended wiggle function that'll let me pick pixel formats that weren't available to me using the old wiggle function. And then I can set the pixel format on the window and I can create a new OpenGL context again using an extended wiggle function with access to a lot more parameters. Once I get back the new OpenGL context, I make it the current context on the thread just like I had to when I was creating a bootstrapping context. 
and then I can go and actually load all the OpenGL functions. I couldn't have loaded the OpenGL functions any sooner than this because an old style OpenGL context won't know about modern OpenGL functions. So now we can finally load OpenGL functions. If I've created a window previously, I don't need to load OpenGL functions now, but we're not quite handling the multi-window case yet, so I'm just gonna slot in the OpenGL functions here. There's a slightly cleaner way to do this if we get to the point of supporting multiple windows later on. Finally, we need a main loop. Right now, we're just demonstrating that we've actually successfully created a graphics window. We're not even trying to show that any particular graphics features are working yet. So all we need is that we can clear the window to a particular color and see that the color is the one we expect. If that works, then we're pretty much happy. So we're waiting for the window to get a message, then we're using OpenGL to clear the window to a certain color, and then we're showing the frame we've created. And that's pretty much all we have to do for now to prove that we We've gotten all this stuff working. So that gives you the overarching structure, which is probably enough to make some progress, but just to make it even easier for you if you'd like to try to implement this from scratch, I'm gonna just let all of the different APIs that I had to interface with in this particular session scroll through on the window for a minute. I won't be going over these in detail because there are so many of them, but hopefully combining the high level description I gave you with this pointer to all of the relevant things to look up is enough to get you going if you're trying to do the same thing I did here. And with that, our first pass at a wiggle layer is done. See you guys next time.